Get ready for Mikey Sen TV. Four, three, two, one, zero. Hey, what's going on, guys? How's everyone doing today? I'm doing well. Thank you for asking. Well, today we're going to discuss another movie, and it's a very trending movie right now. It's just come out, um, and the movie is called Wrong Turn. Uh, it's the two uh, 2021 remake, reimagining, reboot, what have you, whatever you want to call it. Now, this movie literally could have been called anything in the world. It could have been called The Foundation. It could have been called The Appalachian Walk, The Hike, The Crazy Experience, The whatever. It could have been called anything, but let's call it Wrong Turn because, well, it's a popular movie title. It's a popular franchise, popular property. So they're going to do whatever's going to click with audiences and people and everyone knows the wrong turn series right series of movies really the only good one is technically the first one uh, the other ones are just kind of forgettable so we're just going to discuss this movie just a little bit uh, because everyone likes to discuss movies talk about movies right we all do so let's go over the stars shall we uh, it stars Charlotte Vega as Jen. It stars Adrian Bradley as Darius. It stars Bill Sage as Venable. Venable? It stars Emma Dumont as Mila. It stars Dylan McTee as Adam. Uh... Matthew Modine as Scott. We have Bard Barden, whatever. Aurora as Gary. Adrian Fevilla as Lewis. And a few others off in there. As you, as you know, as all these movies are, they're going to have your final girl, right? Now we're going to be talking about the movie. There's going to be some spoilers. There's going to be some stuff going on. But you can tell from the trailers and everything that that Jen is going to be your main girl, your final girl. You always got to have one, right? You can never really have a final guy. For some reason, it's a cliche. It's just the way it is. You got to have a final girl. So, uh, the basic story of this is friends hiking in the Appalachian Trail are confronted by the Foundation, a community of people who have lived in the mountains for hundreds of years. What they did, uh, history tells us that they started this their own little community off in the hills of the Appalachians uh, to get away from the destruction of the world. Uh, they thought that they were looking ahead and, and uh, taking care of their own and hiding away while the rest of the world destroys itself and they can then later repopulate the world. So that's kind of the basic outline, basic story. Again, my opinion, this movie could have been called anything, but let's call it wrong turn to, you know, appease the masses, to bring in some money, to stir up some interest. So, um, right now I'm going to go over just a couple of things that I have wrote down that are, like I said, kind of make you go, eh, and kind of cliche and all that, and I'll try to think of more things along the way. So, I'm going to kind of read it off here. Remember, we're talking some spoilers here, guys. So, uh, at the end of the day, uh, you know, these movies are all the same. There's people that die. Uh, it, it could be one pe person. It could be a dozen people can die. And it seems like at the end of the movie, there's no one that has to answer for all the crimes. It's like, you just seen... Ten people die. You killed people. You've seen killings. You've seen all these different things. And 
you just go back to your normal uh, everyday life like nothing's even happened there's no follow up with the cops there's no investigations there's no courtroom there's no nothing it all just goes away you'll notice that in most every movie that you watch there's no one that has to answer for any of these deaths <laughs> it's just like yeah I just caved some guy's head in so want to go get pizza seriously that's just how these movies are it's just so weird uh, one of the very first scenes that we get to in the woods again spoiler coming up is a very dramatic and traumatic and uh, crazy kind of a sequence uh, of course they're in the Appalachian Mountains and all of a sudden they hear and see something and it's a tree rolling down the side of the hill down the mountain a tree a big log now I don't know about you but whenever I'm in the mountains or in the for forest or woods or any of that uh, you're gonna have a plethora of trees all around okay you're not gonna have a log rolling down the side of a mountain that's you know 20 feet long 50 feet long however long that log log was it was longer than like five feet <laughs> it was a giant log giant tree rolling down the side of the mountain chasing these guys of course nobody thinks to just go to the sides it's hey let's go straight down the middle here while the log is rolling right how many times do we see that not only in movies and TV but cartoons like nobody goes that way it's all let's go this way so anyway you have this giant tree rolling down the side of the mountain where you know it wouldn't because there's gonna be other trees all in the way okay uh, it's not gonna mow over all these trees so we're to assume that this mountain has a giant clearing long enough span to do all this havoc uh, to all these people and you get your first death now another spoiler here we go the first death that we're gonna see is and I'm not gonna get the name quick enough okay the first guy that dies is uh, Gary Gary's the first one he gets hit by the log he gets crushed up against another tree by the log so why am I saying this well because it's a uh, it's obvious from the very beginning so He's out the way, the really the very first scene, um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna skip ahead pretty much to like the la uh, to like the third chapter, third kind of the you know towards the end. Uh, you get again more spoilers. You get Jen and Darius really that that get captured uh, by the uh, Foundation and. Uh, I believe it's only within a couple of weeks or so from what I can gather only maybe a couple of weeks that they've been captured and by the time we see them again Jen is like this trained soldier not just with knives and strong and powerful and crazy but a bow and arrow like she's a dead shot with a bow and arrow now I don't know about you but that's one thing that kind of takes me out a lot of times in movies is whenever you have people training it, it's and it's bad like this in like martial arts movies like you'll see someone who's they can barely throw a punch and within like two weeks time literally it's like two weeks and they're like trained deadly assassins so that was just really cliche and now I, I could be wrong I mean it might have been two months it might have been two years but I think it was roughly about a couple of weeks from the time that they had left to go on their little hiking adventure until the time that you know we see him at the end and not only that but Darius who was clean shaved two weeks ago I guess two weeks now has a beard that looks about like this oh and there's a scene where of course and, and this is at, towards the end there's a scene where finally, you know, uh, Jen escapes. Uh, the dad, the dad, the dad actually came to uh, help uh, to go find his daughter and and, and uh, 
a lot happened there in the camp with that. And uh, actually, you know, and of course they get away and they do all the stuff and get away and then they're home and their home life just seems totally normal again. And uh, Jen comes walking in uh, her parents' house and it just so happens that uh, Venable or Bill Sage, whatever, the guy that plays Venable, uh, he's the leader of the... Um, the foundation he's sitting at the table uh, talking about you know they're wanting to do business together you know they're they build stuff and whatever and he's wanting to get something done anyway it's just a, a ploy for him to get in there and to get Jen again really so oh you know uh, and, and her mom is in there and her mom don't know anything about everything that just happened uh, with her and all her friends and her dad and all that her mom don't know anything uh, that we're aware of anyways so uh, she walks in and and eventually you know after being introduced to him like she didn't know who he was anyway uh, she's like I need to speak with him and so the mom and uh, Jen's I uh, suppose uh, brothers and that they all leave the room just like nothing like wouldn't you think the mom would kind of be like why does she want to talk to him and how does she know him well enough to talk to him and it, it just happens so so quickly without anything it's like you know yeah we're gonna talk about something or talk about business or, or something like that whatever she said it was just like and there was no question it was just like okay let's go and then they left the room and that left them there so that was just a uh, really strange and just really quick uh interaction that I don't think that would have happened personally so uh, and also uh, the short time that Jen was actually with the foundation all of a sudden uh, whenever we catch back up with them at the you know whenever they're safe and sound back at, at home uh, supposedly she's pregnant and I assume by Venable um, I mean pregnant that quick that easy that fast that it just it like <laughs> I, I'm sure things happen right things happen but that was just kind of I don't know a little bit on the nose I guess maybe just kind of like I don't think that that should have been uh, really a factor I don't think that that should have happened that quick uh, and of course at the, at the very end at the very end uh, Venable threatens to kill all her family if she doesn't come back with him to uh, the foundation, back to the mountains. And uh, so she leaves. She gets in the little Winnebago, little camper RV looking thing, and they're going down, and it just shows the cameras just sitting there, and it shows the, the RV going down, just like leaving their, in their neighborhood still. Shows it swerving, blah, blah, blah. They get into a wreck, and then you see her come out, and then you see a Venable come out. She attacks him with a knife and and kill and kills him right there on the road, and then she walks towards the camera, and that's it. And you see nobody interacting. You see nobody from the community. You know, nobody's out there. Nothing's happening. I mean, it's a community. A, a neighborhood like any neighborhood where there's hundreds of people around you know but they don't show anything it, it, it just it, it came off as just kind of another one of those uh, yeah I've just killed a dozen people and well uh, anybody up for pizza you know just kind of came off as one of those moments again like you know it, it, it movies and TV a lot of times just make it so nonchalant like breathing whenever you kill somebody or you see someone die or something like that life isn't like that that's not how it goes so uh, and that's that's just a few of the weird kind of meh moments and, and, and instances that I picked out and there's a host of others that if I had really started writing down you know I could have picked out and you know been picky and picked out a few more things now, having said that, did I like the movie? Yeah, it was okay. I found myself interested in it and 
full attention watching it and, you know, waiting to see what was happening and, and all that. Uh, it, it wasn't a bad movie, per se. It just, at the end of the day, it didn't really bring anything different, really, to the table. It kind of brought things a little different to the Wrong Turn franchise, to the name, uh, because we all know the Wrong Turn usually deals with these uh, deformed, crazy hillbillies, where this focuses on pretty much normal people that uh, are just huddled up in the mountains, you know, and they wear these disguises when they're out in the woods, you know, forest, uh, going around supposedly hunting for food and stuff. Uh, they wear these skulls that they made and all this big garb and they look crazy. But at the end of the day, they're just normal people. Uh, so that was, that was, I think, really the big twist with this movie was kind of introducing, you know, normal people as, uh, as the bad guys instead of, you know, deformed creature, you know, uh, you know, what we normally associate with wrong terms. Um, as far as the performances go, uh, with our main hiking cast and that, uh, everybody did fine. I thought the acting was okay. I thought uh, Matthew Modine uh, plays Scott, uh, Jen's dad. Uh, I thought he did fine. Of course, he's a seasoned actor. Uh, he did fine with uh, the parts that he was given, I believe. Um, no, you know, no, nothing was just holy crap outstanding crazy. But Jen, I think... Uh, does really well with her part. I think she does uh, good with the acting and and uh, and all that. Oh, I got something else to something else to add to to the eh category. Uh, but anyway, I think Jen does well. Uh, Darius, her boyfriend. I mean, he does. You know, every, everybody plays their part well. The lines are done well enough. Uh, once once they're all captured by the foundation. Uh, basically, they're being put to a dark place. Uh, forgot how they phrased it. As, uh, th they were put in trial and, and they were all sentenced to uh, being put in a dark place. That means pretty much put into a cave, into a you know a cell that's basically a cave system, whatever, uh, in the dark. And uh, that's basically, I guess, how they're going to live out their days. Uh, and what that means is also is. Spoiler alert, again, uh, they get their eyes burned out. Uh, Venable has a rod, whatever, and heats it and burns their eyes out. So, of course, the whole dramatic scene's going on. Oh my god, oh my god, uh, you know, everybody's you know, crying and screaming and, and hollering all this stuff. And then you have uh, Lewis, who's up first. Uh, and, and they burn his eyes out. And course now he's being cast into darkness and now it's fixing to be Jen and Darius's turn and before they get a chance to do it of course Jen the strong wonderful amazing smart outwitting girl of all, all these people that is so witty and smart and educated I guess uh, out of nowhere just you know hey uh, you don't have to do this uh, uh, Darius can do this and I can provide you with uh, my womb, you know, uh, I'm healthy and blah, blah, blah. And Darius can do this and he can, you know, and we can help the community and, and all of a sudden, so now they're spared from being, you know, eyes burned out and thrown into the, uh, the darkness. So that to me, just number one, cliche. I mean, I've seen it coming a mile away. No way that that was going to happen to them. Main characters, not going to happen. But number two, it's always the, you know, you, you always have to have the one sacrifice to really shock the audience and shock the, you know, the cast, you know, uh, in the movie there. You know, you always got to have that one person speak up. But, 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 wait, wait, there's more. And to me... Uh, Venable 
and and the rest of the tribe were just easily persuaded like that over nothing like like, ooh, this has never been brought to the table before. This is something new, or has it been done before? Has anyone ever done this before? And and that's where they got the all the you know some of their recruits, some of their people that are there. Uh, I don't know, but it doesn't come off that way because they're kind of supposed to be you know family and generations of families that have all stuck together and made this place. So um, her doing that, and then them just turning on a dime okay we'll spare your lives you know no burning of the eyes for you no darkness so that just kind of came off as like really I mean did we really think anything different so that was just kind of another one of those cliche kind of overdone I knew something was going to happen moments so anyway and again uh, something good on the movie was uh, the kills. There are some pretty uh, intense kills. Sometimes they show the actual kill and sometimes they show kind of the last second of the kill and sometimes they just show uh, maybe the aftermath of the kill. You know, uh, I think it was a good combination of everything as far as that goes and there were some pretty good kills. I mean, there were some bashing of heads and spikes and, and all kinds of good stuff. So... Uh, you, you know, for people that like that kind of stuff, uh, you get uh, a good bit of that. So, that was good on the part. Um, of course, like cinematography and stuff like that, there were some good shots and some good lighting and some little bit of tension and some mood and some atmosphere, as Dave McCray likes to say. But the movie was done fairly well. Uh, the score... The score seemed to fit pretty well uh, from what I could even remember. Um, really, I was paying too much attention to the movie and trying to see, you know, everything that's going on. But um, I guess that's good because the, the score didn't didn't pop out and, like, take my attention away, possibly. So uh, that's probably a good thing. Uh, again, uh, the acting through the whole spectrum, through the characters that we do see, everybody does perfectly fine. It's, it's on tier with pretty much anything like this you're going to see. Um, again, the standout character was probably Jen, but that's that's the way that's meant to be, right? She's the final girl, and they're putting all their effort into her anyway. So, uh, anyway, that's kind of my assessment of Wrong Turn 2021. Uh, not a bad movie. Uh, it's not totally original it's not going to blow your mind but it does uh, if, if it's going to use the the wrong turn name i think that they did a decent job at bringing you something a little different than what we're used to and i think that's a good thing it wasn't bad uh, if you haven't seen it and my discussion hasn't ruined it for you i say give it a watch anyway guys that's kind of my assessment of Wrong Turn 2021. Hey, if you've seen it, leave some comments in there. All right, if you if you've seen the originals, uh, leave some comments in there. Let me know what you got to say about the movies, how you feel about it, how you think this stacks up against the other ones. Tell me how you feel and all that good stuff. Uh, yeah, uh, you know, give it a shot, give it a watch, guys. I uh, hope you enjoy my channel. Check out all my playlists. I got all kind of stuff going on. Uh, everything on Mikeyson TV, I cover all kind of stuff. You're going to love it. Share it. I'm a decent, wholesome mish uh, channel. Uh, even if I cover on touchy subjects, I try to be respectful and decent that you're not going to hear cussing or anything like that. So, also, check out my second channel, Old Mental Pickle. Old Mental, the first word. Pickle, the second word. And that's where I live stream video games. And we do anything from old school to new school. And everything in between. Alright? Guys, get up, get out, get rad, do it to it. Just don't go on an Appalachian hike. And if you do, stay on the trail. Okay? Stay on the trail. We'll see you guys later.
Get up, get out, get around and do it, do it!